What if I told you there was a cruise so awful that it only has 1.4 stars on TripAdvisor and Trustpilot and that those sites are littered with awful, awful reviews complaining about everything from food to cleanliness to the quality of the services and just insane stuff. I'd rather cross the Mediterranean on a dinghy. Great for masochists. And this one, Grimaldi takes every opportunity to show its customers just how much it hates them. So after reading these reviews, I did what any sane person would do and hopped on the Grimaldi website and booked a ticket. The Grimaldi website is absolutely atrocious. It's like something out of the 90s, but within 15 minutes, I had myself an inside stateroom on a trip from Barcelona to Civita Vecchia, Rome. And here it is. I was gonna take in and see how it go. All right, all right. It's technically a ferry, but it has a wellness spa, pool, casino, kids room, three restaurants, games room, bar. It's a cruise. Boarding is unfussy, but I was absolutely shocked to see there was no security at the port. I just have to walk through this non-existent security screening area, pass some signs that say no entry, and onto the ship. It's also oddly quiet. Throughout my time on the ship, I could felt like there couldn't be more than 100 passengers on this ship. Hopefully this means that the staff have had more time to clean and service each room, and that the service won't be terrible. After this short walk up to the ship, it's time to find my room. So I'm searching later and I find the sign that points to my room. Awesome, it's uh, sweltering in here. It is absolutely boiling in here. Um, I th that was like the first thing I thought when I walked in, but it's just getting hotter and hotter. I like stripped down a few layers and, oh man, this is gonna be a bit hard. There's no air conditioning in here either. There's like this thing, I can't figure out how to use it. It's like a valve that lets air in or not. Hopefully when we move, it'll let some air in. But damn, it is hot. So I'm now stuck in a hot airless room overnight. This might just be more than I can handle. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit the subscribe and like button to see more like this. I'm aiming to reach a thousand subscribers and I appreciate you for helping me reach this goal. Time for a bit of a room tour. So this is the bed. Now, it's clean, but there's just like, there's hairs on it and shit. You know? Like this pills from people's clothes. This looks okay. Like, it's not, it's not perfect. I think I was going easy on it here. This bedding is a bit dirty and the bed linen is not properly washed as you can see other people's hair on it too. Grotty. Let's head to the bathroom. Oh, um, there is a shower in here, funnily enough. And the toilet has a label across it saying sanitize for your safety. That's nice. Uh, yeah, gross. But not too bad. Ah, well, I spoke too soon. Oh, gross, gross, gross. That's a disgusting joke. I don't know who they're trying to fool with that sanitized fuel safety label. That toilet is basically a dirty public toilet with actual piss stains on the seat of the toilet. I guess sanitized fuel safety only applies to the label itself, not the actual toilet. So with the ship moving and while I'm dying of heat exhaustion, I decide to try to entertain myself. All right, please don't judge me. I am in fact completely naked, but um, it is hot in here, mate. I want to use the Wi-Fi, so let's, uh, let's go to the website and check it out. Before we try to use the Wi-Fi, you might be thinking to yourself, Luke, this is pretty bad, but oh boy, strap yourself in. It gets so much worse. The 15 euro Wi-Fi package covers the whole trip. Pretty affordable, but the speeds are abysmal. It'll be some entertainment of last resort. Their Wi-Fi sales page says that VPNs aren't supported, which means they're monitoring the traffic and throttling based on usage type, which means my YouTube videos were loading really, really slowly. But thankfully, the VPN that I trust to get around all blocks, ExpressVPN, worked despite their attempts to block it. It allowed me to watch YouTube, albeit at 320p. This video wasn't even going to have an ad, but this literally saved me from going insane on this trip. But without a VPN, or with more people on board, I could imagine that this Wi-Fi experience could go pretty awful. Check out expressvpn.com forward slash Luke Travels to find out how you can get three months free. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Link in the description. With the cabin temperature failing to improve despite us moving, it's time for some hot, hot sleep. Just woken up, it's about 11 a.m. So I slept in for the first time this entire trip. But uh, yeah, I, I just realized that I'm staring up at some graffiti like here, Vargas.com. Um, and then there's a bunch of graffiti in here. And then there's some graffiti down there as well underneath that. Anyway, let's go explore the ship a bit now that it's daytime. The only thing I was really keen to explore was the pool. So I headed up to the pool deck and well, Pool's closed. 
All right, let's make the best of it. Time for some lunch. The plan today is to eat lunch at the restaurant and dinner at the cafeteria. For lunch, I ordered the seafood pasta, as recommended by the chef. And oh my gosh, is it to die for. No, really. It feels like it could kill you. It's the saltiest thing I've eaten in my entire life. It reminded me of Bender's cooking in Futurama. Now for a dash of salt. <laughs> yeah, I'm just eating a plate of salt here. Every bite saltier than the last, in a way that I couldn't imagine possible before this meal. And that's the saltiest thing I've ever tasted. And I once ate a big heaping bowl of salt. It's so bad that I send it back uneaten. This is the first time in my life that I've done this. Despite what you might think from YouTube, I am a socially anxious person. I don't do that normally. After composing myself and downing some water, I get dessert. Fortunately, this dessert isn't too bad, but nothing to write home about. And to top it all off, I still had to pay for that pasta. 37 euros for all of it. So not only is the food on this ship inedible, it costs a small fortune just to find out how inedible it truly is. With that, I head back to my cabin for a while, until dinner time, staring up at the graffiti in the ceiling and thinking to myself, how can this cruise get any worse? Laying here hungry, hot, and disappointed. Even thus far, it's worthy of its 1.4 stars, but oh boy, can it get worse. Man, that lunch was, was pretty f***ing awful. I paid like 37 euros for it. So, not happy, but let's go get ourselves some dinner and hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. So I head up to the restaurants and they're closed. I'm later informed by staff that they don't open past 3 p.m. Wait, what? This boat arrives at 9.30 p.m. into the port of Sibidivecchia, and then it's another hour into Rome by car. Not content with being forced into a fast, I went to the bar where I was able to purchase what I could only describe as a gas station sandwich. You know the one, the type where they put all the filling at the front so you can see it, but as soon as you bite into the sandwich, it's empty beyond that? Smoked salmon and cream cheese, awful, and probably near its use by date. Thinking back, I probably should have checked. Yeah, so with that disappointing meal out of the way, let's head out and check the other facilities on the boat. There's a games room and casino, so let's jump into the casino and see if we can drown our sorrows away in gambling profits. Let's put 10 euros on red. Damn. All right, back to the room to relax and have a shower before we arrive in Italy. Your attention please, all passengers and the truck drivers are invited to leave their cabins and wait for disembarkation announcement in the common area located on deck 10 and 11. So the really hip and cool thing about Grimaldi is that they kick, um, invite everyone out of their rooms two and a half hours before the ship comes into port. So I got kicked out of my cabin about two hours before arrival, which is a bit weird. So I'm just chilling here. So as I wait here on the top deck with all my possessions, I think to myself that this final kick in the teeth feels like such a fitting way to end a journey with a company like Grimaldi. I feel like I was lucky though. There were many reviews complaining of cramped conditions with literally people camping in the holes. Tents, sleeping bags, and the whole lot. So what do I think of this cruise? Well, it's not as bad as they say, but it was just kind of shit, you know? Next, check out this video here where I put myself into actual danger by getting scammed on the streets of Milan.